Now in the front of many of the questions that students set, I'm going to help you interpret the answer, specifically the model summary table and the ANOVA table. Uh, so the model summary table just provides the one little bar in R squared for the model that has been drawn. And in this situation, the ANOVA R is your correlation coefficient between the two variables. And in this case, the correlation is between the temperature that day and the number of patrons that attended the pool. It is very high at 0.959. R squared is simply the square of R. And it's another way to think about effect size or the strength of the relationship between the variables. So the R squared value is the proportion of variance in one variable accounted for or explained by the other variable. R squared indicates the amount of change in the dependent variable, which is your number of patrons, that can be attributed to one independent variable, which is the temperature that day. The R squared value of 0 0.920 indicates that 92% of the variance in the number of patrons at the pool can be explained by the day's temperature. We now begin to conclude that we have a good predictor for the number of expected patrons when consideration is given to the day's temperature. But this also means that 8% of the variation in the number of patrons cannot be explained by the day's temperature alone. Therefore, there has to be other variables that have an influence. Next, we're going to examine the ANOVA table, which is also known as the analysis of variance. The ANOVA table indicates that the model can accurately explain variation in a dependent variable. The ANOVA table shows the various sums of squares and the degrees of freedom associated with each. So from these two values, you get your average sums of squares or the mean squares. And that can be calculated by dividing the sum of squares by the associated degrees of freedom. The most important part of the table is the F ratio and then the associated significance of that F ratio. So the F ratio tells us how much variability the model can explain relative to how much it can't explain. It's basically the ratio of how good the model is compared to how bad it is. And a high number is uh, a very uh, important uh, component. So when we look at this, we can see that the data is F is 322.312. Uh, that is significant because of the value you have in your column for SIG, which is your significant value. That is less than, um, that is equal to 0 0.000. This informs us that there is less than a 0 0.1% uh, chance that an F ratio this large would happen if the null hypothesis was true. Another way to think about it is that the probability is very low that the variation explained by the model was due to chance. So the conclusion is that changes in the dependent variable resulted from changes in the independent variable. And in this example, your changes in daily temperature resulted from significant changes in the number of co-patrons. And in short, your regression model overall predicts the number of patrons significantly well. The NOVA does not tell us about the individual contribution of the variables in the model. And in this simple case, there's only one variable in the model. So we can just infer that that variable is a good predictor. This would be different when we do multiple regression. Now I want to walk you through how to take the information from the output tables and to write the analysis in APA format. So as a bare minimum, you need to report the beta and the significance value and then some of the general statistics like R squared. The standardized beta value and your standardized errors are also very useful. Personally, I prefer uh, making sure that I report our standardized coefficient. 
So in your coefficients table, it's going to provide us the information on the predictor variable. And this gives us information we need to predict the number of patrons at the pool from, based on the temperature for the day. And we can see that both the constant here and the temperature for the day contribute significantly to our model by looking at this column SIG, which is your significance value. Your B value and their significance are important statistics. I want you to know that your standardized coefficients for beta are easier to interpret because they're not dependent on a unit of measurement for that variable. So the standardized beta value tells us the number of standardized deviations that the outcome will change as a result of one standard deviation change in your predictor variable. Your standardized beta value is a measure in standard deviation units and also directly comparable. Therefore, it provides you better insight into the importance of the predictor in the model, and it can tell you uh, the importance of each predictor. So you want, uh, the bigger the absolute value, the more important that predictor uh, variable is. And in this situation, beta is 0.959. So we round that up to 0.96 and we go B equals 0.96. Insert a comma. Then we will report the T value, T test, okay? We also see a T test, and that tells us whether the B value is different than zero. SPSS provides the exact probability that the observed value of T would occur if the value of B in your population were zero. If your observed significance is less than 0.05 in this column here, then that results in a genuine effect. So for both T's in this column here, the probabilities are given as 0 0.000. And so we can say that the probability of these T values occurring if the values of B in the population were zero is less than 0 0.001. So therefore the B's are significantly different than zero. We need to report this t-score here. We will write it as negative 6.98, and we do go to two decimal places. Next, we report the p-values. SPSS gives you the exact p-value. APA tells you if it is less than 0 .001 as a significance value, you need to say P is less than 0 0.001. This is an exception to the rule. For any other P value, you have to give the exact value. Now we're going to switch gears and report the data from the ANOVA table. So the first thing you need to know is that we're reporting the F ratio. So we have parentheses F parentheses one degree of freedom for the regression. Then we have the 28 degrees of freedom for the residual. We have an equal sign. Then we will type the exact F value as it appears in the table. So in this situation it is 322.312. Then we will calculate the significance value, and again it's 0 .000, so we say P is less than 0 
and then we have to go to our model summary table and it gives us the r squared value and we type r squared of 0 0.920 and we go to the three decimal places and we make sure there is no zero in front of that because we cannot have an r square value of one or greater than. That's how you report a linear regression in APA style. It's typically two sentences long and you always use this kind of template. A simple linear regression was calculated to predict and then here in place of the dependent variable, just make sure you say uh, like number of patrons at the pool based on the day's temperature. And then you would have your B beta, your T test, your significance value, your F ratio with the degrees of freedom, as well as the F uh, ratio value. Then you would have the P value for your significance, and you end with your R squared value. It's that simple when you're done. If you have questions, I want you to reach out to me through Canvas because this chapter presents both the singular linear regression analysis and the multiple regression analysis. And we are going to address multiple regression in a separate set of lectures. But I do want you to remember that with any singular linear regression, you have a single independent variable and one dependent variable. And the object of that analysis is to develop a prediction equation that permits the estimation of the dependent variable based on the knowledge of a single independent variable.